What's going on everyone? In this video, we will use JavaScript and PowerShell to see how we can build and interrogate strings using code. Let's go ahead and get to it. Textual data inside computer programs is represented using sequences of characters that we call strings. So far in this series, we have seen how strings can be used to do things like define a log message or define an ID for an element on a web page. Now we will see how we can interact with strings using code. With code, there are two powerful things that we can do. Number one, we can use code to build strings. And number two, we can use code to interrogate strings. To demonstrate both of these, we will work in PowerShell and JavaScript side by side. So let's jump over to the consoles. We saw how to write log messages in PowerShell using write host. And we saw how to write log messages in JavaScript using console.log. We also talked about how we can create references to strings. We use the example, my name is Deep Lizard, to show how the label name can refer to the string Deep Lizard. Let's see how we do this in PowerShell. And now in JavaScript. Even though PowerShell and JavaScript are two different programming languages, these two lines of code are the same and they both do the same thing. They create a reference called name that can be used to refer to the value deep lizard. One thing you may notice is that dollar sign. On the PowerShell side, references are required to start with a dollar sign. This tells PowerShell that this is indeed a reference. On the JavaScript side, this is allowed, but it's not required. I said before that we can use code to build strings. Let me show you what I mean. What if we had two strings instead of one? What if we had the string deep and the string lizard. Could we use those two strings to build the full string deep lizard? Yes, we can. Let me show you how. We can use the plus operator to take two strings and build a single string. In both cases, the code is identical. You can think of this as adding the strings together to create one. This operation is called concatenation. We take one string and we concatenate it with another string. When we execute both of these lines of code, we're going to end up with one reference that refers to the text or the string deep lizard. And that's how we build strings using code. Now that we have the reference name that refers to the value deep lizard, we can use the reference in place of the literal string deep lizard. Let me show you what I mean with the log message. All right, we have built the string deep lizard and created a reference that we can use to interrogate the string in code. When we interrogate a reference, we are asking it to tell us things about the data it refers to. Let's interrogate our reference now so we can get an idea about what kind of information is available. What type of data are you? What character is present at index six? What is the index of the letter Z? Do you end with the word lizard? Do you start with the word lizard? Does your string contain the string lizard? Hmm. Name.contains is not a function. This error is what we get if we try to use something that doesn't exist. PowerShell uses the verb contains for this operation, while JavaScript uses the verb includes. 
and this is how we use code to interrogate strings. In these cases, the interrogation code is available through the references. In most of these cases, the code was the same for PowerShell and for JavaScript. However, we did highlight a difference when we were asking if the string deep lizard contained the shorter string lizard. In PowerShell, we use the word contains to do this, but in JavaScript, we had to use the word includes. These types of slight variations are typical of different programming languages, but the functionality is all the same. There is another small but important difference that you may not have noticed. See if you can spot it. Props to the first person who can point out this difference in the comments. To spot it, you'll need to look at the lines that were identical. But anyway, definitely give this a try yourself. And if you want to see a full list of methods available for interrogating strings, just Google string methods PowerShell or string methods JavaScript or string methods insert any programming language. It works for most of them. I'll put links for these two in the description. And if you have any questions, put your strings in the comments.